The Vidal Speaks Podcast. So I would like to always start by first tell us a little bit about who you are and then tell me your story. I want people to know what you do, what your qualifications are, and then I want to know your story. Okay, wow. Yeah, I started off pre-med and undergrad in Pennsylvania at a pretty prominent university. I switched over to regular science. I went on to graduate with three degrees, three different majors, three different universities. Um, and really they were in basic science and biology and aquaculture. And um, I went around and traveled the world, lived and worked in five countries. And the last one before this one where I, I live now in Panama for 11 years was South Africa. And that's basically where my story starts. Uh, before going to South Africa, I had to go for a checkup and all that, and they wanted to give me vaccines. And at the time, I really didn't know enough about adjuvants and how dangerous they were. And so I told them, look, give me whatever you think I need, and I want to be protected. I want to go over there and get sick. So they gave me about 12 vaccines all at once, and then I went over. So about a year and a half, two years later, uh, working seven days a week, 15 hours a day, it was pretty intense project in aquaculture in South Africa. And I was under super amount of stress and I started developing insomnia. And so after a while I went to a doctor and sure enough, uh, he gave me a prescription drug. I think the name of it was Stillnox. It was a pretty heavy duty tranquilizer and it absolutely put me out. And I was thankful for it uh, at that time to be, to be whacked and uh, be able to sleep eight hours because I hadn't been able to and I was working a lot. But if I took too much of it, it would it would really bamboozle me the next day. So I wasn't keen on doing that for the rest of my life. Well, uh, you know, months after that, uh, the, the drug wore off, stopped working and I needed a new drug. Well, I moved to Panama to start another aquaculture project and I still suffered from insomnia. So I went to 10 different doctors over the next, I don't know, seven years, and including a naturopath, and they kept giving me more drugs and I took them. And a lot, most of them didn't work. And I'd come back and say, look, you know, this drug doesn't work. And they'd give me another drug. And over time, I really got sick of it. None of, none of these things worked for me. I developed anxiety where I'd sleep about three, four hours. I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning with anxiety and blood pressure was 210 over 120 and I'd go back to the doctor and, and one of these MDs just looked at me and said, look, I don't, I don't have any more drugs. Take this. It was like a benzodiazepine. Uh, you need to take this whenever you have problems because at that time I, I was, you know, heavy into anxiety, which was really ruining my, my work. And uh, he just looked at me and said, I don't want to ever see you again. I, I don't have anything else to give you. So my last shot was to go to a naturopathic doctor here in, in Boquete, Panama. and. Uh, you know, he hooked me up to a bunch of machines that beeped and clicked and gave me a big stack of papers uh, that showed all these things wrong with me and then sold me these big bag of herbs to make teas and gave me ionic foot baths. And, you know, as I'm doing these ionic foot baths, I'm seeing all this brown stuff in the water and I'm questioning, you know, what is that? And he's telling me, well, that's uh, yeast coming out of your, your feet. And I said, well, it looks like oxidation of electrodes and rust. No, no, he said, no, no, that's, that's, that's uh, yeast. And... Those things, that other stuff on the top there, which just looked like, I don't know, you know some flocculent. Uh, he said, well, those are heavy metals. And I said, well, you're sure? Oh, yes, yes, you have to trust me. I said, fine. And this went on for a couple of months, did absolutely nothing for my insomnia. So at that point, I'd had enough. Yeah. And I just quit all the doctors. I, I quit all the naturopaths, I'm saying, and, and just figured it out myself. So I, I, t I went and bought every single book I could find alternative medicine. I read research papers. I, I went at it just like I do my normal job, in which as a research scientist. And I started, I just figured out I had a mineral deficiency. I was studying the likes of uh, Dr. Joel Wallach and Dr. Eric Berg and, um, you know, uh, certainly Dr. Andrew Cutler and, and the list goes right on down. All, every book on, you know, gut problems and anxiety, mineral deficiencies, amino acids, nutrition, meditation, you name it, I read it. And I figured out I had a mineral deficiency. And so when I supplemented with magnesium potassium, my anxiety disappeared and I got pretty freaked out about that. I said, how can that be? Why didn't any of these doctors I saw for all this time ever just mention to me, hey, you know, Bill, uh, you gotta think about minerals, supplement minerals, it might help your anxiety and your insomnia. And so the next question was, I had to figure out 
you know, I didn't always have this mineral deficiency. What caused it? And of course, I went through the hair analysis and figured out I had mercury. So at that time, I was detoxing and, and mercury was pretty high in my blood. And so I began detoxing. And so then I began studying all the detox methods over time. I got into Rife Technology. I started treating people for chronic disease. And then once I really got into this, I became almost addicted to learning about alternative medicine and everything involved with it, detoxing. And I just started treating people and healing them left and right. I started Rife Technology and I just took to it like I was made for it, or it was made for me. And I started healing everybody and then eventually I grew into a, a, a regular full-time business. It went from part-time to full-time and now I do everything, fourth stage, uh, fully metastasized cancers, uh, parasites, viruses, bad bacteria. I do the you know what, which we can't talk about, which is really a weak, a weak virus uh, for Rife technology. There's all the frequencies for that. And I, I treat just about everything you can imagine, chronic pain, inflammation, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, everything and anything you can imagine. And I became a specialist at detoxification of heavy metals because, you know, this is what I was going through. And of course, I, I read through all of Andrew Cutler uh, and all his, his work. And then I read the books where people were using the Andrew Cutler method of the chelation every three hours and every six hours and so on. And it seemed like people really suffered through redistribution of of heavy metals in the body. And so I looked at, looked at other things. Now, who took over for Andrew Cutler, I think, was a guy by the name of Dr. Chris Shade. And he really got into studying more the production and the upregulation of genes to increase uh, the level of glutathione in the human body to detox uh, the heavy metals that way. And, you know, when I studied mercury and how it was stored in the body, I knew it was stored in 80% in the kidney and 10% uh, 10 to 15% in the liver and then the rest in the brain. So, so I, Dr. So, Bill, ahead. hang on one second. Let, let me unpack some of that stuff because there's a lot of information there. And I mm -hmm. know uh, some of my listeners are maybe like want things broken down into a little bit more understandable. So first thing, when you were talking about, you didn't know anything about the adjuvants in vaccine. I just want people to know that adjuvants are something that's, you can explain it's added to the vaccine, like preservatives and stuff, right? Right. Right, so mer mercury is added to vaccines as an adjuvant. Now an adjuvant is supposed to work with the attenuated virus or with the live virus sometimes to increase the inflammatory effects to have an overall immune response that's going to benefit the person getting the shot to increase immunity against the disease but what i found out from reading all these books and papers is that the adjuvant actually causes a totally different immune inflammatory pathway that really creates over inflammatory conditions that is not a benefit to the human body and yeah. that's through my study Right. And this has been a problem for, you know, so many people that's, you know, when it was added, it was called thimerosal, which is mercury. And uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, I lost my mom to a flu vaccine. And uh, so I'm very, very familiar with mercury poisoning because you see it when somebody's dying of that. And um, you went on to talk about it, Dr. Wallach. And that's so interesting because I found him. Oh, my God. I want to say like 25 35 years ago and remember mm -hmm. that tape he made it's called dead yep. doctors don't dead lie doctors don't lie yeah. yeah and i had like 50 copies of that and i passed it i took his minerals in my fridge every day he's an yeah. ama amazing guy and he was a vet yeah. and then a doctor and he talked right. about how most people are dying from mineral deficiencies but when mm -hmm. you mentioned that you're you when you took magnesium potassium what which magnesium did you take magnesium oh boy. no which Remember? which you said not it wasn't magnesium citrate it was magnesium probably chloride i was taking magnesium chloride which is a salt the way the magnesium form that exists in the human body but also i'm a fan of chelated magnesiums as well i think it's magnesium glycinate i think that is good too so you took uh, magnesium yeah. and potassium yes but just a potassium chloride uh, about a quarter of a third of a teaspoon. I would take that at night and totally got rid of the anxiety over time. So, so the uh, I recommend that. Go ahead. The, the potassium chloride is the direct one that got rid of your anxiety? 
Yes. Yeah, yes. That's and interesting. It, and, it, and it's super cheap. It's, uh, you know, buy a kilo of it out of Amazon for maybe 20 bucks or something pretty cheap. And I always recommend that for any of my clients going for anxiety and it works for them. And it also improves their insomnia conditions. So yeah, I'm a big fan and I've learned, I've read all the Wallach's books over the years. I must have heard him talk 50 times on all these different shows. So uh, yeah, he was a big influence on my work. How do you, how do you take the magnesium chloride? Oh, geez, I just take a half teaspoon in a glass of water and drink it. <laughs> Once a day it. or right before bed? Right, just right before bed. You know, if if you if you're experiencing a lot of problems with detox, you know, you can take with with a dinner or with a lunch, you can take a magnesium chelate. And I think that's good. If you're going through detox, if you're going through mercury toxicity and mineral deficiencies that you can figure out through a hair test, uh, it's good to supplement magnesium twice a day because magnesium is so involved in energy production in the human body. It's one of the first minerals that the body dumps when you're in flight and fight reaction to maintain that status of, you know, constant on the go. Uh, and, and it's one of the one of the minerals that mercury takes the place of in a hundreds and hundreds of reactions. So, you know, it's and you can't overdose on it. If you yeah. take too much, it winds up giving you a bit of diarrhea. And that's about the extent of it, or loose bowels. So... It's, well, it's a win-win. One thing that, because I trained in hair tests, so I used to do it for many years and still do it on myself because it's the best way, in my opinion, to learn mm-hmm. about especially mercury, but other other chemicals, aluminum and all kinds of uh, even minerals that you may be dumping out so much. And mm-hmm. uh, I learned a lot learning how to do a hair test because you see like mm-hmm. autistic kids, you do yeah. their hair test and the first results come back like they have no mercury in the body and then they start doing like taking taking minerals or doing something and man they start dumping it and their mercury levels go up 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 and that's the beautiful thing about hair tests it's like the first test doesn't tell you anything but by the third or fourth test you start seeing what's happening in the body and a lot of people can't believe that that's the best way to test for mercury let's right. say but it's a fantastic yeah. way yeah absolutely it's that you're 100 percent right on the money the first test typically is what happens is if people are mercury toxic you know they're not good excretors and we can go through that but they're storing mercury in the in the organs in the brain and uh so when they do enter the point where they're starting to supplement and that's minerals and the body starts kicking into detox mode. Then you see the mercury jump into the blood from the tissues. Then it shows up in the hair test. Exactly. But when you get the first hair, when you get that first hair test, all you see is the deranged mineral transport that, you know, you talk about uh, Dr. Andrew Cutler and I've heard his videos on your site. They're outstanding. I've really, really enjoyed them. And you see that deranged mineral transport where some are too high, some are too low. And that's the indication that those heavy metals are causing the problem. And when you begin to enter into detox, like I did, my mercury went off the chart, way off the chart. And um, I really had to engage in super detox. And then it went down and my latest test is is almost zero. I mean, it's just right in the reference range. So that's those cool. things work. The Vidal Speaks Podcast.